So I clicked on it and YouTube gives you another pop-up window. It's almost like a little warning. Are you sure you want to see the hidden comments? And that intrigued me even more. So I clicked on it and I was blown away at the amount of hate. <sighs> Hi guys, so I wanted to jump on here real quick before we head out to a Christmas market. I was on YouTube this week and uh, into, I was going through the channel, cleaning it up, and um, I go to this section called the comments. That's where I respond to comments and I catch up on the comments and I read through comments. So there is this subsection within the comment section within the YouTube studio where the comments are held for review. And typically it's if someone used profanity or uh, it's a spam or whatever. Uh, so that kind of like lands in there. So I go through it, I clean it up and I approve the comments. So there is this one section which I've never noticed before. I don't know if it's a new feature or if it's always been there and I just overlooked it. And this section is another subset of this and it's called something like show hidden comments. So I clicked on it and YouTube gives you another pop-up window. It's almost like a little warning. Are you sure you want to see the hidden comments? And that intrigued me even more. So I clicked on it and I was blown away at the amount of hate. I would say there were probably roughly around 10 or so comments and each one of them was worse than the one before. So the comments were like a mix of threats and mix of uh, name calling, uh, but just really, really bad stuff that you would never hear an adult say or even a child say to anyone else. So then that got me thinking I have mentioned this before on this channel that I am not faced with hate and I'm not faced with hate comments. When someone says hateful words to me, whether it's in the comments or if they DM me or so forth, to me, they're just words. And to me, words are meaningless. For example, if someone was throwing shade at me in a completely different language that I didn't understand at all, I could care less, right? So I, because I don't even understand it. But if someone were to uh, say hateful things to me in German or English or Punjabi or Hindi, I would know what that person means and what they're trying to say to me. But then ultimately it's up to me, how deeply do I let it affect me? And that's kind of like the rule that I've also, uh, always followed throughout my entire life. So this got me thinking about the level of bullying that goes on in the adult world. So I was bullied when I was in school, but I've been the same person since I was a little kid, since, you know, that I am today. Uh, bullying never faced me, hurtful words never faced me. I just choose to ignore them because I think there's bigger and better things to worry about in life or to enjoy life than to worry about someone's hateful words. But there are people that do get affected by this. But seeing this on YouTube, and knowing that it came from most likely adults. And every single one of those really hateful comments came from an American user, but not to say that there is bullying only in America, because I think bullying exists everywhere in the world. It's probably just as bad everywhere. And this got me thinking to know really why do people bully? Why are people bullies? So I went online and I started reading through so much um, so many essays, so many articles, uh, research papers, and they all led to the same results. All the scientific reasons and all of the emotional reasons, everything boils down to the person who is the bully. They have an issue in their life. It's their issue, but they're projecting onto other people. They want to feel like they're in power. They want to feel like they are in control. And they try to gain control by intimidation, humiliation, and insults. So they target something that they know that that is unique about you or something that you are conscious about. And they target that specifically uh, to make you feel less, to make you feel more conscious about it. It could be based on race, religion, ethnicity, uh, sexual identity, like really anything. So there's not one pinpoint area of why, what people will bully you on, but they will choose something that they know is unique about you. They will pick that because it doesn't fit into the norm of the society and they hammer at it until you break down because that is their goal, is to break 
you down. So now the question is why? Why do people do this? So the first and the foremost, <laughs> which um, makes sense, is stress and trauma that they have gone through themselves. The study shows that bullies that are actively bullying other people have gone through some sort of stress or trauma within the past five years. And the stress can come from changes in life. So typically they would have either a, a divorce that has happened. They are not able to handle this emotionally, so they become the bully. It could also be a death of a relative or a loss of a job or a loss of a career, loss of monetary gains. So anything that's trauma or stress that they have gone through could result in them behaving as a bully in order to cope with their own insecurities. So you might wonder why do they do this? It's because practically they're masking. So it's like someone who is addicted to alcohol. When they go through something traumatic, something stressful, they turn to alcohol or drugs. It's basically masking their pain. So they turn to this negative behavior to cope with their own negativity. Now here's the interesting aspect. 66% of bullies are men. And the reason for that is how men are supposed to behave. So they tied it down to the behavior because when they go through some stressful or traumatic situation, girls are encouraged to talk about their feelings in most of the cultures. Men are encouraged not to talk about their emotions because they need to let this aggressiveness or anger or frustration out. And they turn to to bullying because they are unable to talk about their emotions because they are discouraged in, in today's society. The third thing is that a study shows that people that are bullies, they have low self-esteem. And targeting someone else and bullying someone else is their mechanism for masking their own self and projecting the attention to someone else when they're in a group setting. So they try to deflect that negative attention back onto someone else rather than onto themselves. Next, I found that bullies most likely have been bullied themselves. So it's kind of like a vicious cycle. So as a child, if you're bullying in school, it uh, study showed that they were being bullied by a parent or some guardian within their household. The child then goes to school and also becomes a bully because this is learned behavior. And the last point I wanna make here is, which this really made sense to me because this is what I, I have witnessed myself. They have very difficult time in maintaining relationships, whether it's uh, intimate relationships or friendships, and everything seems to be at a surface. Trauma and stress that they have gone through, they have lost trust in cultivating those deeper connections. Anyone who's watching who is experienced bullying as an adult, whether it's on social media or if it's at workplace, or if you're in school and you're watching this, it's not about you. Bullying is never about you. It's always about the person who is bullying. Maybe this discussion today helps you in dealing with uh, people that are negative, people that are bullies, uh, people that try to control your life but don't listen to anyone. Only listen to your own heart. Only listen to your own wants and needs because this is one life that you have and you want to live it to the fullest without anyone having to tell you what to do or how you should behave or how you should be in any aspect of your life. It's your life. Live it to the fullest. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.